So with that, um, we're going to move ahead and offer our own land acknowledgement. Um, so I'll start by introducing myself. So I am Kyle Shaughnessy and I am of mixed indigenous background. So I am uh, Dene and Irish and I hold a joint position um, between the indigenous initiatives team at CTLT and also um, the workplace learning and engagement team in HR. And so I'm an indigenous education consultant um, and I'm speaking to you today from UBC campus which is on unceded Musqueam territory. And I will pass it over to Bronte. Thanks, Kyle. Um, my name is Bronte and I'm an educational resource developer on the Indigenous Initiatives team at CTLT. I, um, I'm coming to you today from the lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. I'm in downtown, uh, but I'm originally from the lands of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes in Western Montana. And I like to acknowledge them always because they don't get as much as acknowledgement in their own territory. So I'm excited to be joint talking and uh, talking with you all today. I also want to give a shout out to Carissa, who's our CTLT events coordinator. If you have any issues during the um, presentation or during any other part of the like technical issues, if you direct message her, she'll be able to take care of you. So, Haichika uh, Carissa for helping us. Thanks, Bronte, uh, and I want to introduce myself as well. My name is Ola Klesha. I'm the instructional designer and project manager with Central HR and Workplace Learning and Engagement. I'm joining today from the territories of the Coast Salish, Stolo, Salo, Tooth, and Squamish lands. And I'm uh, originally from and was lucky enough to grow up on the lands of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Mississaugas of the New Credit. Thanks everyone for joining us and I'll pass it to Claudia. Thanks, Ola. My name is Claudia de Diaz. I am an educational consultant in CTLT Indigenous Initiatives, and I'm joining today from my home, which is located on the unceded territories of the Muscan people. I am originally from um, Latin America, what is now known as Chile, and living in the territories of the Muscan people has helped me to learn more about the land of the Mapuche people, who are the indigenous people of the place where I'm coming from. Um, you might have noticed that um, in this first slide, there are four uh, pictures. And each of these pictures is a picture taken by each of us. And one of the key ideas that are part of the course on land acknowledgement that we will be presenting today is centering indigenous places and knowledges through our land acknowledgement. And each of these pictures represent in a way our own relationship with this land and is a reminder for us of our own responsibilities uh, towards this place. And today, uh, this is a note I, I want to share on behalf of the group. Uh, we decided to do a brief land acknowledgement precisely to emphasize uh, the importance of centering our land acknowledgement on the place and on the relationality piece uh, in which uh, we are located. So the course that we will present today offer a number of fulsome examples of land acknowledgement for course participant. And we hope that each of you get excited about uh, this course, either to enroll in the course or perhaps to recommend the course. But most importantly, uh, we would like to, again, uh, recognize the relationality piece and the importance of centering our land acknowledgement on the places where we are situated. Next, please. Next slide. So for today, um, we have organized the session in two parts. The first part is what we can call behind the scenes, in which uh, we will be sharing some details on how this course has been developed. And in this section, we are going to talk about the need for the course, how we became a team, how we built a process for this course development and some learned lessons. 
And in the second part of this show and tell, uh, we will do exactly that, show and tell the course for you. So we will have Bronte who will walk us through uh, the course. And then we are going to end up with uh, some Q&I uh, for, for all the Q&A for all the participants. And I think I will be um, passing on Kai. Great, thanks so much, Claudia. Um, so we'll just move to the next slide, perfect. Um, so I'm gonna talk for just a couple of minutes about recognizing the need for this training. Um, so as I'm sure many of you know, land acknowledgements feature in a lot of different areas around UBC, so both large and small. Um, so we see them in our email signatures, um, when, we're, when we're opening staff meetings, um, ongoing land acknowledgements in classrooms, uh, major events for sure, and even in curriculum design, you'll see them in print as well. Um, and so up until, you know, say like the, the last very uncertain year, UBC has always, or UBC staff and, and faculty and students have always been able to rely on existing resources and knowledge gathered and developed specifically to Musqueam and Point Grey campus. So when doing a land acknowledgement, a, a lot of that research has already been done. And there was those um, specific statements that you can find um, in the Indigenous portal on, on UBC's Indigenous portal, just telling you exactly what, what some of your options are for making a land acknowledgement statement. However, when we moved to working from home, um, there was a real need for people to shift their land acknowledgement to the areas um, that they're actually living on. So uh, people felt moved to reflect on their relationships to the land that they're living on, um, raising their families on, possibly owning properties on, which can be a complex either situation or bring about some complex feelings um, that they wanted to navigate with their land acknowledgements. Um, people participate in outdoor activities, growing their own gardens, um, really engaging with the land in those ways, um, and also having spaces of personal refuge and development um, in these lands. And so relationship to land really changed when we all started working from home. Um, and so a large part of my work beginning at UBC, which did start, um, I started in my position, I think it was about two, three weeks after we started working from home. Um, so I, I did on board remotely. Um, and so a large part of the work that I started with in my position at UBC focused around land acknowledgements. Um, and so there was a lot of different ways that this would happen. So uh, there was one-on-one -on -one consults with people. Um, there would be shorter segments for larger workshops um, on Indigenous perspectives. Um, myself and uh, several other uh, staff, both on the Indigenous Initiatives team, as well as uh, staff from Huiwa Library, um, developed a series of four micro videos um, around different aspects of developing a land acknowledgement. Um, eventually that turned into a 90 minute workshop um, for the online teaching program at CTLT. Um, and then that further expanded into two hour workshops that we were offering for individual teams and faculties and programs across the university on developing meaningful land acknowledgements. Um, and so the focus for people reaching out for consult, both for themselves and for their teams, was really focused around developing acknowledgements that were home-based and invited reflection. Um, and another motivator for the UBC community is the Indigenous Strategic Plan, um, because that's really invited the UBC community to increase their capacity to integrate Indigenous-specific content into courses, um, into their programming, and also to acknowledge and continue fostering uh, good relationships with host nations. Um, and so we, uh, we, we just sort of felt, you know, um, the, it just, it became a major, major component to our work. And it was, it was really great because it generated so much good conversation. Like we had so much opportunity to really discuss, um, what goes into creating a meaningful land acknowledgement, because that was just the number one question. Um, and I mean, as incredible and rewarding as that was, we also needed to rethink how we were doing this in terms of like consults and running workshops, because the demand kind of grew beyond our capacity. Um, so the desire, we also had a desire to expand some of our own work in other topic areas as well, um, because we found a lot of the work was starting to focus on land acknowledgement uh, between myself and a couple of the other team members. Um, so that uh, got us sort of sparking on the idea to maybe develop an asynchronous training. Um, so we'll just move to the next slide and talk a little bit about how we uh, constructed our team. 
Um, so after we identified that there was a need on campus, there was an opportunity to really um, pull together some support. And I mean, as much as there is a tactical piece of becoming a team, there's also a dynamic and a relationality um, that's needed to function effectively as a team. Um, so there was interest and availability that was expressed by different team members across meetings. Um, and it was kind of a bit accidental, um, the way we sort of formed as a team. Um, and so we're going to be acknowledging each other in this slide, providing a little bit of context, um, holding each other up in this work, um, appreciating each other in this work, and really, um, I think, engaging in relationality, which is such a huge um, aspect to developing a land acknowledgement. Um, so each of us can really speak to the strengths that the other team members brought. Um, so I would like to talk about, oh, this feels very emotional. I feel like I'm going to cry. This is very exciting. Um, so I'm going to speak about my, uh, about my teammate, Bronte. Um, so Bronte has an amazing amazing amount of experience um, as a librarian at Huiwa Library um, with an incredible amount of knowledge on just resources related to um, Indigenous perspectives and knowledges. Um, and so she has this brilliant, like, not just knowledge of the resources, but also what makes them good resources. Um, so it's not that she'll just give you a list or a name of something or an article or a citation. She'll give you the full on reason why you need to engage with it. And she's super excited about it. And it gets you excited about it. And so it's a really wonderful thing. Um, to have somebody so so thrilled about their work and so thrilled about resources. Um, and Bronte can really just sort of work on a document and calling on, or, or you can like work on a document that calls on your own knowledge and your own experience, but Bronte is really able to pepper relevant citations throughout the entire document. Um, and this also really helps shape the content because um, when she was able to bring these resources, it's really invited other questions like, hey, have you heard of this thing? Have you heard of this topic? Well, no, I haven't. How can we expand what we're talking about based on these resources that exist? Um, so it's just, you know, have you heard of this? No, I haven't. I had no idea about that thing. Um, so, uh, so that, and not only this, but she has an incredible enthusiasm for doing this work in a way that offers respect and intention for Indigenous communities, um, and also just willingness to be open about her own process of uh, developing land acknowledgement. So that was one of the things that really um, called to inviting Bronte onto the team. Well, and so that, I'm going to pass it over to Bronte now. That was so sweet. And also it is very like, it is emotional to like hear things. So like Claudia, it's your turn to now blush. Like I was blushing because um, I'm going to say some really nice, th great things about you. <laughs> um, and so Claudia um, joined our team as kind of like, I see her as like our, like, as our lead teacher, like the person who was gonna, who helped us really like hone in on our learning objectives and how students interact with materials. And it was just so impressive. And I was always learning something new about like instructional um, and our instructional role. But she also constantly pushed us to ask critical questions about comfort, like about comfortableness and discomfort and why we were including the topics and really pushing us to make sure that people um, I like had a space to sit in their uncomfortableness that comes with land acknowledgements. Sorry, folks. Um, and so, um, and that was just like something that like really made me think about the teacher's role and about how, and so she really made sure that we understood that like a teacher's role sometimes is to push people to learn. And sometimes that includes uncomfortableness and discomfort. And I was really just in awe always of her um, really helpful questions. Of, of, of exploring and understanding of, and she always had us take a step back and say, why are we doing this? Why are we learning this? Why are we including this? Is it just because we have in the past and synchronous ones or is it because it's gonna add something to our course? So thank you, Claudia, for being such a great teacher to me as a team member. Yeah, thank, thank you, Bronte. Uh, for everyone to know, each of us, uh, is going to speak to another member of this team to show uh, how we became a team. I, I am not going to have the chance to say the wonderful things about Bronte, but I can echo what Kyle said. My mission today is to talk about Ola. And I have to tell that I became part of this wonderful team in November. And before that, I had used some of the resources that Kyle had developed for land acknowledgement. So I was super excited to become a, a part of the team and work with him. But then when we met the first time, I, I quickly realized that uh, he was not going to be the only one who surprised me. 
Ola, uh, who is an instructional designer, uh, was um, very quickly I realized all the uh, skills and knowledge that uh, Ola was bringing to the team. And um, for example, I was especially impressed by Ola's skills and abilities to offer us a path to organize our ideas. And as you can imagine, when we started this work, we had many diverse ideas and many of them were very messy. And Ola helped us with tools and knowledge and experience to start organizing those um, ideas in a way that helped us to move forward. And uh, that was very important to arrive to consensus and then find the next step in our course development. And I think she was very clear to remind us who was our audience and was, which was the scope for this course. And this is very important because as you take courses in land acknowledgement and many other uh, topics around indigenous engagement, you will see how rich are these topics and the different levels of depth and engagement. So all help us to keep in mind our audience and the scope of the course so we could work on something useful and ultimately help others to really learn uh, something that would help them to do their own land acknowledgement and engage with this place, which is the ultimate purpose of doing this practice. It's really, as the title of the course says, doing it with respect and doing, uh, doing it uh, with, uh, with sincerity and responsibility. And um, I learned so much from all that, many tools, uh, how to organize and do course development and all the last part that had to do with populating with all the course uh, content we developed into the Canvas shell was um, a part of her responsibility. So all the credits are for her. So it was a real pleasure to work in with all as well. Thank you, Claudia. Yeah, gosh, it's hard to sit that long being like talked positively, but we're not, I'm not, <laughs> it's like I need to shake it off or something. Uh, but such kind words, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not used to this. Thank you. Uh, and I'm uh, honored to have the chance to talk uh, about Kyle uh, and the role that Kyle had on uh, the team and the project. Uh, we had initially had a chance to connect around opportunities for uh, pursuing maybe some content in the professional development space. So the HRPD workshops and thinking about Indigenous folks focused uh, content. And uh, then I'd had a chance to uh, attend the land acknowledgements workshop that was offered live uh, via Zoom last year, um, and really was inspired in that session to sort of realize that as much as I had felt at that point that I'd been engaged in this conversation, uh, both at UBC as well as other institutions, um, realizing there's just, just so much more to learn and the way that Kyle was uh, presenting the information, making it um, so inviting to be curious and not to maybe feel sh ashamed or uncomfortable um, beyond maybe the regular discomfort we should have uh, to just you know recognize our maybe privilege and position, but uh, really appreciated that and got inspired to uh, kind of volunteer myself and maybe even voluntold Kyle that I'm, I'm in the project and I'm going to, I'm going to be part of it. Um, so we, uh, when the momentum built for this self-directed course, which we now are happy to be presenting to you all, um, Kyle invited me into the conversation and I was so uh, in awe of the way that um, he was able to kind of lead us as a team. Um, and while I think we had this sort of shared leadership, it was really uh, Kyle who kept the kept the ball rolling, kept uh, the ideation, um, being curious throughout, uh, throughout the different stages of the process and ability to hold a vision of something that is quite complex um, and has uh, has sensitivities to it, um, but also then being quite open-minded and curious to explore different ways of talking about the content and presenting it, um, as well as navigating that content in ways that doesn't intimidate learners, but uh, invites them into also be curious uh, and explore. Um, and I think if 
if you have a chance and when you have a chance to look at the content, it's really clear that that uh, facilitative approach and conversational approach, relational approach that uh, Kyle facilitates with has translated into the text of the course. And as you read through it, you kind of feel that invitation um, and hopefully are inspired to, to keep pushing yourself in your learning journey as well. Um, and so really grateful to be, uh, to have been part of the process seeing this leadership of, you know, of grace, focus and relationality. Uh, we're rec we were able to, uh, you, Kyle, were able to recognize the strengths of everyone in the room, as well as those uh, recognizing where we needed more and, and who else we needed to tap outside of our own little four person group and making sure that those voices were heard and informed our process. So thank you for, for being part of that and, uh, and, and bringing us all in. I think we all have you to thank for bringing us into this process. And, and allowing us to be part of this course. Uh, and thank you, Krista, for showing off our little funny uh, animations. I'll just close to say that um, we wanted to kind of represent it as, you know, we're all slightly unique little circles, ovals here. Uh, we're all different in our own ways and uh, with some messy processes and lines and bureaucracy to navigate, uh, we were all able to kind of come together as this uh, unique team uh, that work together fluidly, but maybe uh, it's never, no, no team's perfect, right? So we have a little bit of some jagged lines in there. It's, it's all part of the process and it was a, a joy. And I think I'll pass it to Claudia next. Uh, yes. So um, now that you know uh, a little bit of this team and what each of us uh, brought into this course development, we wanted to share how we build this process. And we got started in November 18th. That was our first meeting in which uh, we met to know each other. Um, I was new uh, on the team on the Indigenous Initiatives and um, Bronte and I didn't uh, know Ola. So the first meeting was really about um, meeting each other and knowing a little bit how we work uh, on our work styles. And based on that uh, meeting, we quickly started to um, work on the course architecture and process documentation. And this uh, all that was really important for get us started. She brought a tool, which was um, sort of a table in which we had the different part of what we were envisioning for this course and the purpose, the learning objectives, the audience, the time of completion, all the different tiny parts that uh, are part of this course. And then as we were meeting and uh, discussing different elements, we started to fill up uh, this table and uh, develop course develop, uh, the development uh, and the content of the course. Of course, Kyle brought an uh, incredible amount of information and uh, resources with Bronte, but as we started to discuss, we realized as something that Kyle continuously was saying. And he said, I want participants to engage with respect, with sincerity and responsibility in this course. And so at some point we realized that those three words were the pillars of the course. And we started to organize all the content based on those pillars. So as you can see, there was quite of a reorganizing through this process. But as we arrived to that organization, we were quite happy and we realized that it was a good flow for, for this particular uh, course. Uh, at some point, uh, we started to work in one-to-one. Uh, -one, uh, one, uh, for example, Bronte started to populate with resources and Kyle started to write, I, I kind of support that part of the work. And Ola was started to document, asking questions about the different stages as part of the course. And then um, we started, well, we started, it's a, it's, a, it's a large number of people, Ola started to populate Canvas and um, create uh, the best layout for uh, going to the next stage, which was uh, all the feedback process. 
which Kyle is going to tell us a little bit more about. Yeah, sure. I, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the feedback process and also just share a bit more about the content. Um, but I also just wanted to take sort of a side note, something that occurred to me as, it, as we were doing those introductions in the last piece and just sort of like the, the warm fuzzies that, that get created when we're interacting like that. So often you'll hear in Indigenous spaces, like especially if you are making something, like I recently had the privilege to take part in the rattle making workshop uh, through Musqueam, um, which has been offered at, through WeWa, um, and also taken part in drum making workshops and stuff. And something that is so often said is make sure that when you are doing this, when you're engaging with these materials, when you're engaging um, with this with this object that you're making, you're doing so with a good heart and a good mind. And so to be approaching these things with positivity, um, with good energy. And I think that that is so much a part of doing this work is that we wanted to create something that was going to feel accessible and inviting to people and cultivating good relationships and good appreciative relationships that hold up um, each other's strong suits. Um, was really a part of that. And I think that that energy lends itself to the actual training that we were able to develop. Um, so anyways, back to content. Thank you for listening. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit more about the content. So um, a lot of the content was based out of things learned about um, through consulting at, at UBC. So it was one-on-one -on -one consults with staff from all areas of the university, um, consulting on staff training modules, consulting with faculty on integrating into uh, course delivery. Um, Indigenous Initiatives also hosts uh, virtual coffee sessions. So there's great discussions in there. So, so many just really good discussions inspired some critical questions, some critical thinking around what it means to develop a meaningful full land acknowledgement and that's where so much of that came from. Um, so in the feedback process, it was a fairly standard feedback process. Um, so we sought feedback from staff who were um, from a variety of areas. So staff who were subject matter experts. Um, so other folks who were on the Indigenous Initiatives team or other Indigenous programming. Um, staff whose uh, expertise is in staff training specifically. Um, staff who would want to take the training for their own professional development. So maybe land acknowledgements are fairly new to them. Um, we also wanted to ensure that we had feedback uh, across multiple campuses. Campuses. So we had folks uh, submit feedback from UBC Vancouver, UBC Robson Square, and UBC Okanagan. Um, and so we circulated feedback forms with a course link, uh, gave people about uh, one or two weeks um, with a Likert scale, and then also some specific questions just based around the campus that they're from or the role that they're in. Um, circulated the feedback forms and uh, and then receive them back fairly quickly. And, and one of the wonderful things is that none of the feedback really contradicted each other. So we didn't really have to do too much groundwork once it came back in. Um, we had a lot of positive response. Um, and then also, especially from folks who were um, subject matter experts, we had a little bit of that sort of deeper questions for reflection for maybe we should shift things this way and have we thought of including this resource. Um, and so that was just so helpful from multiple perspectives. Um, and so it was all feedback that actually could, could quite easily uh, fit the course parameters. Um, so now uh, we're at a point where we're starting to share our work. So I will hand this back over. I don't have a, I don't know who is speaking next, but I know that maybe it's Claudia. I think I'll, I'll hand it back to Claudia. We are going to share our, some lessons that we learned in the process. And I think I, you are going to present the first two. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so back to me. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the lessons that we have learned throughout the uh, development process. So um, I would say one of the first lessons learned for me, um, as I sort of um, wanted to get the idea started, uh, wanted to get the idea for the training started, was that it takes time to do quality work and to do so intentionally. Um, so originally, I had said back in September, I was like, oh, you know, we made those micro videos in like, you know, of course, it took like half an afternoon to make a five minute video because you got to have like your hair and your lighting and everything like that. Just perfect. Um, but, uh, you know, I was like, oh, it'll, it'll take about three weeks. We'll just develop something really quick that goes online. Five minute micro video. Totally no problem. Make a one hour course about it. Um, I'll just sit there and blab at the Zoom camera for an hour. Sounds like a great idea. Um, and so it was really helpful to be able to bring in some other folks and, and realize, no, you know what? We need to slow this down. We need to take some time to actually build out some other components. We need to make this interesting with a variety of mediums. There needs to be text, there needs to be video, there needs to be um, 
a variety of, of methods sort of brought into it. Um, so we did have to move the timeline a few times. So I'm very thankful to my teammates and, and, and leadership within my team that, uh, that we were able to move the timeline so many times to make sure that we got this right. Um, and make sure that we did our work well. Um, and our own learning evolved over time as well, because the longer you sit with the topic, it's kind of like writing a thesis. The longer you sit on it, the more information you have, the longer it gets. Um, so, you know, we learned new things over time. So our, our own understanding of doing land acknowledgements evolved. Um, and the other piece uh, that I've already spoken to just a little bit was just that it's better to work as a team on something like this, because not only is there multiple skill sets as we all shared, but there's multiple social positions. Um, so myself having an Indigenous background um, have a particular way of reflecting on the topics than, than other folks would necessarily. And, and also having just different levels and types of experience um, with the topic in terms of like where we've done land acknowledgements before, uh, conversations that we've had with others in our work. Um, so we all had a really uh, a varied, um, varied experience working uh, with land acknowledgements and offering and speaking about land acknowledgements. So it was, it was really helpful to be able to have a team to have those multiple perspectives. Um, and I'll hand it over to Bronte to talk about word choice. Yeah, so um, I, I, when, when we were all like, oh, what did we learn from this process is something, and something that I had said was like, be how intentional we were about our word choices because words have so much power and they, and people remember what our words are. And even down to the title of this project, um, the, it, it went through multiple different adjectives at the top because we couldn't figure out exactly like what was the best word to describe what we were trying to put into this course. Um, sincerity was in there for a while. Um, and so, and the, the different words came in and out because we really wanted to be intentional and, and focused on what we were describing our feelings as. And, um, and, and throughout the whole course, then we were very intentional on what we were putting down and what we were saying. Um, ever, each word or phrasing that's non-anglicized, that's uh, using hunkaminum or um, other indigenous language characters, that was intentional because we wanted to normalize people seeing those um, spellings and see that it's possible to do in Canvas and that you can do those type of things that, uh, on, at UBC and on the and through these interfaces. And something that um, Professor Link Kessler says in the What I Learned in Class Today project, which is another CTLT Indigenous Initiatives uh, project, is um, that you that we're learning the language as we go in this learning process of reconciliation and of um, and of learning about Indigenous topics and perspectives and people. And so, uh, the word choice really does matter. And so, throughout this course, we were really intentional on what we're going to pick and what people are going to remember and what because they're going to remember what we wrote down and now i actually think is when i when ola gets to start, uh, ola gets to share a little bit about what she learned thanks bronte yeah uh, for me it was uh, two things in particular um one was responsiveness and i think this for me was uh i, I come from a bit of a project management background um as well as then uh, coming in as an instructional designer was really thinking that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to build process. Like that's sort of my mindset is like, I'm here to build process, um, but really the recognition that uh, adapting the processes that maybe I had in mind or, you know, templates that I already uh, hoped that we would kind of go through and really recognizing that the way that we're um, working through the course um, needs to be unique for the content that we're developing um, and the team members that we have and the ways that they prefer to work. Um, we were, you know, even something like we tried OneDrive, we're like, it's new on campus. We we we, sh we should do that um, because we're also in different departments so we don't have the same shared driver like I, I guess this makes sense um, and you know there's a little bit of anticipation initially and um, you know you're not sure what's going to work and if you're gonna have to restart something and uh, apologize for wasting someone's time but uh, really being able to be responsive and uh, and sharing ideas um, and recommendations of what you think um, might work based on your own expertise and, and having the space to to navigate that together as a team was I think really effective for for our group and then the other piece um, 
I think this was a, a group reflection, but I, I have the honor to, to talk to it specifically, uh, was integrating relationship building. Um, and Kyle's really uh, spoken to relationality as, uh, as a critical component of Indigenous engagement uh, as a whole. And I think um, in our engagements as a team, that was a particularly valuable way for us to uh, build comfort with one another, to have slightly uncomfortable conversations or be vulnerable with each other, acknowledge our gaps in knowledge um, um, or, you know, say like, oh, I've been doing it this way for years. And I, I think maybe that's wrong based on what you just told me. And I, I need to learn. Um, and I think that uh, what, how we did that was unintentionally, I think initially, um, and then maybe it kind of became a bit more of an intentional process was the first, uh, Kyle, I think, set us up for usually hour and a half meetings, um, if not sometimes two hours. And the first 10, 15 minutes were uh, just chit chat, like what's going on in life, uh, whether it was weddings or dog updates or um, you know, whether we got to go for a walk in a new location, thanks to COVID, that's as far as we went. Um, but really an opportunity to just sort of uh, level set at the beginning of a conversation and say, look, this is where I'm at. This is what's going on for me. Um, maybe this is my energy level today. Um, like, you know, I've presented four times this week and I'm, I'm going to contribute as much as I can, but maybe I'm not there. Um, and that really helped us uh, work through the content in a way that I think that was effective um, and no one really feeling that, oh, oh gosh, we're losing, we're losing time, right? We're losing minutes, um, but that this is part of the process. Our ability to uh, be honest with each other and be vulnerable with each other was dependent on sort of having those moments to, to converse uh, outside of quote unquote work uh, and content. And so I really appreciated uh, that and hope to embed that in the future as well. Yeah, thanks, Ola. I think as I was uh, listening to each of you, I thought to integrate uh, the two lessons that I am going to present. One of them it says shared ownership, but I think it's really about shared responsibility. And as we were building a relationship, as Ola just said, we also were building a sense of shared responsibility for this course happening. And that felt when we were working together. Uh, we always had homework and uh, our next meeting was the moment to share what we had done. But also we were really supportive of our um, colleagues by saying, do you need support in this or in that? And so that was a real sense of shared ownership. And so at some point we uh, trusted that this was going to work, um, despite we realized it was a big responsibility to uh, develop this course. And the second point has to do with leadership and recognizing everyone's um, uh, abilities, uh, skills, and knowledges. And also, I would say, has to do with the stories that we bring. It is very important to make clear that this course is possible because all of the work that is surrounded us. Uh, three of us are coming from the a team of indigenous initiatives who have been working on this for quite a while. They have been working with other people who have guided them uh, in terms of uh, what to do in uh, through land acknowledgement, what is the purpose? So in a way in this course are coming all that stories from those relationships. So. I hear the word leadership has to do also with recognizing leadership outside our team that has uh, informed so much our work. And so in sharing our this lesson, uh, our purpose is really uh, showing uh, how we did this work. And we hope that uh, uh, perhaps some of this lesson might inform your own approach to course development. So that uh, is the purpose of, of this section behind the scene. And I think now we are ready for the second part of show and tell. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. We're getting pretty close to the big moment. Um, so uh, Bronte is going to uh, be walking us through just in a minute or so, um, like the actual course itself, just to go and have a look. Um, I'm very excited to see it because I've only seen a particular version of it, um, sort of the, the scaffolding uh, behind the scenes part of it. Um, 
So uh, one thing that I wanted to share, though, is is uh, one of the first considerations that you'll see in the course is about the audience focus. Um, so this course is actually designed for all learners across campus, so for staff, faculty, and students. Um, and then something as well that was uh, quite important um, in, in our design is ensuring that it was um, not necessarily designed for non-Indigenous people in mind, because it can be really easy um, to center non-Indigenous people in land acknowledgements um, as we spend time focusing on our relationship to land as settlers and stuff. And it's very important to be able to bring the focus back um, and also to ensure that this is inclusive of everyone. So um, there was a need to acknowledge that um, that of course many Indigenous people themselves may want to know more about doing land acknowledgements. I know myself um, having mixed and Indigenous background, um, I didn't know all there was to know about land acknowledgements. It took learning, it took going out there and trying them out, it took um, stepping up to offer them, um, and I also needed some encouragement and some coaching in that process. Um, and also a lot of Indigenous folks, uh, myself uh, partially included, is uh, a lot of us are raised outside of our own cultures, and so we don't have opportunities Opportunities to learn these things close to our home communities. Um, and also for a lot of, for some Indigenous nations, uh, doing land acknowledgements is not actually part of their own protocols. And so this may be something that Indigenous learners don't necessarily have access to. Um, so we wanted to ensure that this course was accessible to everyone, that it wasn't ex exclusive or of, of one particular audience. Um, so we're going to go ahead and share screen and uh, have a look at the course. Anyone want to do a drum roll with all of the talk of teaser in the chat? Um, uh, that's that's what I kept thinking. So um, this is it. It looks like a Canvas course. I'm so, <laughs> um, uh, so um, as UBC folks, we all know um, what Canvas looks like. Um, but so this is our landing page when you enroll. Uh, after I do the after I do my little spiel, Ola is going to drop the link in so that you all can go register. Uh, because I want you to listen to me first, because I want I want your full attention. I'm sorry, um, but so uh, this is the entrance of the um, course. And if you go down here and you press Start Course, you'll enter our like welcome landing page. And this was really important that we opened up first with. Um, uh, land acknowledgements from Vancouver and Okanagan. And that was something that constantly came up throughout the course is that we wanted to have um, equal representation from Musqueam and from Silk's Okanagan Nation so that both of them, um, so both campuses have lots of resources and lots of places to go and explore when building their own land acknowledgement. Um, so that's this page. And then down here, if you go course purpose, who's this course for? That's a little bit of what Kyle was just speaking of about setting the audience up and under and explaining that we know uh, that we wanted to acknowledge that lots of different people are going to take this course. And this is who this course is for. Um, the sorry. Next is our intention setting. And this is really to help call people in. And to call people and and say like you might feel uncomfortable, you might feel vulnerable going through this course. There might be things that you're never that you've never heard before, or there's might be new learnings that go against what you have learned. And so you might have some unlearning, you might have some new learnings, but come in and join us for this like 60 minute course, and just see where you end up and see where that goes and see how you feel afterwards. And so not to go through the whole course because you all know what a Canvas course looks like. I'm gonna use the modules. Um, tab over here and just uh, pop into specific places in our course that look a little that are different than most other Canvas courses. Most other Canvas courses won't have things like this because we did this with a relationality perspective in mind and that and, and, and wanting to focus in more with an indigenous way of knowing and seeing how everything fits together. So I won't be going through all of it. I invite you all to go in and actually take the course and see every page and watch all of our videos. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but so my next place that I'm going to point out is um, under, sorry, I have speaker notes, is under, uh, so here we have that respect, sincerity, responsibility. And so these are those areas that we're also really highlighting. And then here on develop your land acknowledgement, press the wrong button. Here, uh, so you go through and you actually get to go and build your own. So it's like a choose your own adventure. Let's let's build it together. And what we were really hoping to do actually in these pages is assuage that nervousness and that, oh, I'm not, oh, I don't know what um, I don't know what land it is. Well, we're gonna give you tips on how on how to find that land in nations. 
um, I don't know how to pronounce the name, or I don't know, uh, or I don't, uh, or I don't have the right terminology. I, I'm, I get nervous saying these things beforehand. So we really tried to give them. So we really tried to give participants some like encouragement as well as assuaging that nervousness and assuaging that anxiety, because we want that. Because by the end of this course, we want you to be comfortable doing this and be and be eager to do it and be like, yeah, I'll do the land acknowledgement. I want to honor the people of uh, the people's lands that we're on right now. So back to the modules tab. And so after our people build their acknowledgement, we have a place called share your acknowledgement. And this is a living document. It's through Padlet. And so after participants go through the course, they'll be able to add their land acknowledgement here and see also everybody else's, all the other participants who've been on here's course. Through this little tab button, they can populate their own land acknowledgement and write it in. It's anonymous, so people don't have to feel nervous about sharing. They don't have to do this part of the course, of course, but it's really there for people to add and see what other people are at and to see where other people's learning on and see what they wanted to and see what they took really to heart from our exploring land acknowledgement pages and see what they and just see what everybody comes up with. So that's, so this is actually one of my favorite parts of the course so that people can so see what other people say and um, seeing what like, and seeing how far you can go. And also as somebody, if you take the course, you can come back over and over again and get new ideas. Cause every single time that I hear somebody else's acknowledgement, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting thing. That that's something cool that maybe I could either add or something that I wanna go research uh, for my own land acknowledgement. So if somebody says something interesting about like, their homelands. I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is like for where I grew up. Let me go check it out. So that, so I'm really excited for this page and to see how it ends, to see what people come up with. The last part of the, of the course that we wanted to highlight is our next steps and closure page. So of course we have resources because this was my big thing is I was like, oh, let me just give everybody the things to read. I just want people to know how to read them. And so we have, so we've broken it up um, under like foundational knowledge, understanding like why UBC wants people to do land acknowledgement. So understanding like the calls to actions, the MMIWG calls to justice, and then internationally like UNDRIP and calling people's attention to those things and how they influence what we also do on campus. We have blogs, we have, um, and then this is where we uh, have that specific like UBCO, UBCO location and then UBCV, Point Grey campus, Robin Square has things there for them. And then finally, we have our continuous learning and next steps page. And this is really a call to action for folks so that they can understand that doing a 60 minute course is not gonna, um, is, isn't just the end. It, you shouldn't just do this course and be like, great, I'm an expert. I don't need to do anything else. Um, that there's a, that there's that there's tons of things to do after this to continue your learning journey and to continue exploring um, how you can how you can work within indigenous perspectives within to your work or within your personal life. There's uh, people who, after doing um, our land acknowledgement or uh, our, our synchronous land acknowledgement courses in the fall, who say, "Oh yeah, now I look up on native lands where whenever I vacation, like where I'm going." And so it's just a constant. And so hopefully this this is our page that's hopefully making people think like after the course, what am I going to continue to do to 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 continue my learning? And also, what are what was what were things that were interesting in the course that I want to go read more about afterwards? Like did reading about the missing and murdered indigenous women's calls to justice make me more interested in that topic? And where can I go find more things about that? And also we wanted to just invite people to our indigenous initiative virtual coffee hours. And so that's like a very, so that's a highlighted place for us so that we could also continue this conversation in person and synchronously and through connection with people is that if people are doing this course and they have, and they have questions or they wanna come discuss it with us that our team is open to that and to please contact us and that we would love to do that. So, and of course, at the end where we really wanted to acknowledge that mistakes are part of that learning, that, that, that learning process. So why not get started? And that's our course. Um, if I could go back to the slideshow. Um, oh wait, Ola, I think it's gonna, did, did you put it in? I don't get to see things because I'm in this like share screen. It is there indeed, thanks Bronte. Yes, so please go register. So please go um, enroll and take it. And uh, on the next slide, 
we're uh, going to stop the recording and so that everybody can ask questions and feel comfortable um, sharing out. And so please like use the chat, um, use the um, use your voice, turn on your camera. Uh, we would love to hear any of your questions about this.